What's going on YouTube? It's been a minute since my last video. Uh, there's been a few reasons for that. Um, one being I'm currently working on a short film and it's a bit bigger than stuff I've done before. We have a real location for this thing. I don't want to give away a lot of details yet because none of it is really set in stone besides the location and the fact that we are going to be doing it. But as far as like dates and stuff like that, I'm not sure yet. Definitely a bigger scale project than what I've done before and so I'm excited to dive into that. I'm on the third draft of that script, hopefully nearing the end of the revision stage, and we'll move on to filming here in the next month, I hope. Another reason why I haven't uploaded quite as frequently is because I've been working hard on some client work. So I was really fortunate and I'm really grateful to have just finished working for my first client. She's a real estate agent near where I live and so I did kind of like an interview setup, uh, which is my first time doing a setup like that. So. It went, I think, well enough. Um, I'm pretty proud of the work that I did. It was just an awesome learning experience to kind of not be the director of my own vision for once and to kind of like hear what someone else wants to see on the screen and then I kind of, as the cinematographer, have to make that come to life. So that was just honestly an invaluable experience that I'm very appreciative for. But even though I'm busy with some other stuff in life, I really wanted to keep this channel alive and make at least a small video here going over something that I did as practice uh, I wanted to recreate a shot from Dune. I've always really enjoyed this scene from Dune where Paul talks to a member of the Bene Gesserit. I think I'm saying that right. And it's just a really well lit scene and I'm crazy about how soft the light is. And so I wanted to kind of take on that challenge to see how soft can I make the light that I have available to me. Uh, I really don't have any rigs to set up a bunch of like skylights or hoist a, a large like light with a crane over my head and make that shoot down onto me. I used what I had and what I had was a ceiling fan light and an old cheap like plastic ring light uh, that I used for streaming back in the day. So I used a ceiling fan light, a cheap ring light, I used some parchment paper for diffusion and an $8 shower curtain that I got from Dollar General. So the first thing that I did is I set up my shower curtain by taping it across a rod uh, that I could elevate with two stands. I think they're used for photography. Um, it's actually like a hand-me-down gift that I have around the house. And then next I set up the ring light and how I did that is I stuck the ring light around the cylindrical shape of the ceiling fan light that I have in my house and I taped it to the sides of the light up top and that was giving me some extra light that I could play with because the ceiling fan light by itself wasn't enough and so the ring light around that light was able to emit enough light down through the diffusion that I set up later on to provide me the light that I needed to take the shot. And then next, uh, playing with the white balance a little bit, my camera, I set the white balance to, I think it was 2000 or 2500. It was pretty much the lowest setting that I could go to in my Sony ZV-E10. And in doing that, I took the ceiling fan light and the ring light, which by the way, I matched the ring light color temperature to the ceiling fan light because I could control the ring light, I couldn't control the ceiling fan light. I matched it to the ceiling fan light which was pretty warm and so I matched the white balance in the camera to make that warm light appear more of like a daylight white light. While I was up there I took a sheet of parchment paper or like baking paper would work, I think it's the same thing, and I taped a sheet of that over both the ring light and the ceiling fan light because I knew that this light had to be really, really soft. And I wasn't doing myself any favors in this shot because whereas I'm sure the real set had a large light above the entire ceiling of the set, which a bigger light helps with a more diffused, soft look, I was not doing myself any favors by having this small kind of point source light being this ceiling fan and ring light right above me. So I added that piece of parchment paper to immediately start diffusing the light just right at the source pretty much. And then I took the other end of the shower curtain and I taped it onto a kind of like roll up green screen that I have that was also a gift from a friend and basically made a tent of diffusion. Uh, this big square soft box above my head um, that was able to be a secondary diffusion source past the parchment paper. That way the light coming down onto my head was really soft. And although the light was really soft, it was still kind of point sourcey. Um, again, like the source of the light is just so small, it's actually like this big, whereas I'm sure the lights they were using in Dune are much bigger. Uh, so what I ended up having to do was use a bounce board just below my chin, and I kind of angled it just below the frame off screen to bounce some light back up into the shadows under my neck area, um, and into my eyes a little bit to make it look like that light coming from above me 
was really draping across my face more softly and not so harshly. And then after that, I put on my best acting face and then took the final shot, which is what you see here. Um, overall, I'm really happy with it, uh, especially working with what I had. This is pretty much a zero dollar budget endeavor. Um, yes, I did have a nice green screen that I could use that is pretty much wrinkle free all the time. You can go buy a roll of green screen fabric from places like Walmart or Marshalls or like Hobby Lobby maybe and, and buy these rolls of green screen on your own and set up some stands, steam it out to get the wrinkles out, light it properly, and you're done. I don't think the light was quite as soft as the final shot was. You can see in my eyes there's definitely some more darker circles there than what you see on Timothy Chalamet's eyes. Chal Ch than what you see on Timothy's eyes. And I think that's okay. I think that the ultimate goal of this was just to learn something new and get as close as I could to the final shot. Um, I did tweak it a little bit in post, which I think you should always do when you're trying to shot match, because the final shot that you're matching to is going to have some kind of like grade, color grade on it. So I kind of threw in just a little bit of blue-green and then messed with the contrast a little bit and brought my brightness down in front of the green screen to a level that I thought that matched the final shot. Um, so it's by no means perfect, but I did learn a lot about light and a lot about how to make light soft. It takes a lot of work, and this is definitely something that I'll be using in the future. And I'm already using some of what I learned from this right now. Um, I have my Godox light, which is my uh, key light that I typically use, bouncing against my white wall behind the camera here. And then that uh, wall light is bouncing back through a sheet of diffusion. Um, and that setup is kind of called a book light. And I'm doing this to kind of like simulate this, uh, you can kind of see the edge of the window over here that I actually have in my room. Um, but this light on my face is not representative of the light that is coming through that window. The window is motivating that light, which I'm helping amp up through this uh, key light. Because all cinematography is, is basically gaslighting people into thinking what they're seeing is believable. Uh, to show you what this room really looks like without my light on, yeah, I'm obviously way too dark, and with the magic of light motivation, you can click this back on, and here we go. So thanks for watching, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video, I had a blast doing it, I learned a lot of new stuff, and I hope you did too. Thanks.